Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. Thanks for joining us today. In this episode, Dr. Mershon is treating a patient who sustained a sports trauma to the mouth, injuring tooth number eight and number nine. The patient underwent root canal therapy and Dr. Mershon restored the case with Bruxer anterior crowns on number eight and number nine and veneers on number seven and number 10. The patient is a professional jujitsu player, so Dr. Mershon prescribes a play-safe mouth guard to protect his smile. Let's see how Dr. Mershon packs a one-two punch into this restorative plan. Over to you, Dr. Mershon. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm happy to share the case of an active young man who came to me with extremely discolored and chipped central incisors due to a previous sports injury. His teeth became necrotic over time and the high probability of endodontic treatment became a reality. Careful consideration had to be given regarding the strength and longevity of this patient's final restorations. Due to his active lifestyle and choice of high-impact sports such as mixed martial arts and jiu-jitsu, the fabrication of impact sport guard immediately after restoration was essential to a complete treatment plan. The patient's primary goal was to restore his discolored teeth. The initial treatment plan included root canal treatment on 8 and 9 and CAD CAM designed and milled Bruxer anterior crowns as final restorations. To start, only 8 and 9 were prepped. Beginning with the 852G diamond burr from Messinger, I am cutting through the interproximal contact. The minimum material thickness for all ceramic zirconia crowns is only 0.8 mm, allowing for a more conservative axial reduction, ideally being 1 mm. After packing a double zero size cord, I am getting ready to place the depth cuts gingivally, incisally, and facially. With a round diamond burr, I create a 1 mm circumferential chamfer margin, and with calibrated depth cut burrs from Axis Dental, I reduce 2 mm incisally and 1.5 mm facially. Care must be taken when assessing the amount of incisal reduction necessary. Here, the right central was 0.5 mm shorter than the left, so only a 1.5 mm incisal reduction was done on number 8. With his first set of temporaries, the patient had a chance to look and evaluate his smile and give feedback, so at the following appointment, he asked if the size and inclination of the laterals could be changed. A new treatment plan was discussed and the patient agreed to also have veneers placed on 7 and 10 along with the original crowns for 8 and 9. To enhance the aesthetic appearance of the final restorations, I also plan to perform laser gingivectomy on number 7 and bleaching of 8 and 9 preparations due to their dark stamp shades. To continue with the veneer preparation for 7 and 10, a snap-on matrix was created to serve as guide for the depth reduction as well as to give the patients the opportunity to reapprove his future smile. A calibrated depth cut burr from Brassler was used to cut through the matrix and obtain a 0.3 mm preparation finish line, a 0.5 mm reduction on the mid-facial third and a 0.7 mm reduction on the incisal third. I also adjusted the incisal length of the matrix by 1.5 mm. After the removal of the laxatemp acrylic matrix, I noticed the pencil marks were only present on the left lateral due to its labial flare. With the diamond burr, all depth cuts were leveled until surface enamel was smooth. A bone sounding probe from Solvent Dental was used to confirm that 0.5 mm gingival recontouring on number 7 will not violate the biological width. The Picasso diode laser with an initiated tip set for 1.8 watts at a continuous wave was used to remove the excess tissue. Hydrogen peroxide loaded in a ultra dense syringe was scrubbed gently into the tissue to remove the laser char. After repositioning the preparation finish line to the new gingival level with a fine diamond burr, a new set of CAD CAM fabricated temporaries were placed and the patient was dismissed for two weeks to allow the tissue to heal before bleaching procedure. For comparison, I decided to do internal bleaching on number 8 and removal of carious tissue followed by external bleaching on number 9. 
To fill the cavity, I used Dye Core Flowable Composite. For the internal bleaching procedure, I prepared a slurry mixture of sodium perborate particles with a drop of anesthetic mixed to a wet sand consistency. The canal just apical to the gingival margin was sealed with cavit, then the pulp chamber was packed with the bleaching paste. The remaining 2 to 3 millimeters were also sealed with cavit and patient was temporized and scheduled to return in another 2 weeks for the external bleaching on number 9. After adequate bleaching was achieved on number 8, opalescent boost in office whitening gel was used for the external bleaching of number 9. The cavit and sodium perborate bleaching paste was removed from the right central incisor. The access cavity was cleaned and prepared to be obturated with Tycor flowable composite to restore the tooth structure and provide a good seal. The usual steps of etching and bonding were followed before extruding Tycor material into the pulp chamber, then cured. The first cord is packed and the prep of number 8 is refinished. Here I am using an Arkansas white sewn to smooth off any sharp line angles before taking the final impression. The second cord is gently packed into the sulcus and anatomical camper caps are bitten into place for 5 to 7 minutes. After removing the top cord, we now have a wide open sulcus for the light wash impression material to flow into. The benefit of the dual core technique is that the top core provides lateral retraction of the tissue and this will help the designer technician to positively identify the margin and produce a well-fitting restoration. After full arch impression and bite were taken, the patient is ready to receive the CAD CAM fabricated biotems. Here you can see my assistant using opal dam green to block out the interproximal undercuts that could cause reline material to flow and lock the temporary into place. After a quick light cure of the liquid dam, the fast tent nested biotemp can be relined and cured in place. For this combination case of two crowns and two veneers, Temban Clear was chosen for the temporary cementation. For more information on how to expedite your temporization process, watch last week's episode on Chersai Life. At the final appointment, the four unit Broxel anterior crown and veneer restorations were checked individually to ensure proper fitting. Slight bleeding was observed on number 7 and to prevent any contamination during bonding, I chose to pack cord around the laterals before the veneer will be seated. Because 8 and 9 crowns are to be delivered first, I prevent any excess material from adhering to the adjacent teeth by using Teflon tape. When preparing the intaglio surfaces of the Broxer anterior restorations, my assistant Will is initially scrubbing the intaglio of the crowns with IvoClean. This universal cleaning aqueous solution from IvoClar effectively cleans the bonding surfaces after intraoral try-in and creates optimum prerequisite for the multilink atomics adhesive looting cement. As an additional step, each unit is also prepared with a blast of coated sand for silicization of the zirconia surface. Finally, each unit is scrubbed with a layer of Monoban Plus for one minute and lightly air dried. Before applying the AMB primer to the preps, I like to use G5 from Clinician Choice as a standard in my practice. This is a glutar aldehyde that has several benefits beyond desensitizing. Most recently on Chersai Live, a question was asked why I use a desensitizer on non-vital teeth. I would like to go over in more detail on why I like to use G5 as an antibacterial agent. It has a broad spectrum of action and a fast killing rate. It can destroy not only bacteria but also fungal spores that may be left behind, thus ensuring a clear surface for bonding. While the desensitizing and antibacterial effect of G5 are good reason to use it, there is also a third reason for its use. Glutar aldehyde has gained attention in literature, having shown to positively affect the longevity of the dentinal resin interface by helping with bonding, resulting in a long-lasting restoration. Multiling Aramix Translucent Dual Cure Looting Cement is used to first place 8 and 9 and a 2 second tack cure is all that is needed to make it possible to peel away the excess. 
Same steps were followed and the veneers were seated with finger pressure and held in place with wooden sticks while cured. After removing the excess cement along with double zero retraction cords, a strip of glycerin gel is extruded and light cured once more to prevent the formation of an oxygen inhibited layer. Occlusion is checked and adjusted where indicated by the troll articulating paper. This end result is drastic enough to noticeably change the look of the patient's smile and restore his youthful appearance. These Broxer anterior restorations are a great choice due to their chip-proof durability, making them ideal for this patient who have broken his natural teeth prior. These new crowns have high flexural strength, a natural appearance, and the ability to withstand his active and high-impact lifestyle. To prevent this young martial artist from future dental trauma, I prescribed him a play-safe mouth guard. Because it has unique power dispension bands, it was specially designed for his martial arts needs. This type of play safe mouth guard can be specially designed with different layers of materials to provide maximum comfort and protection for all sports. With materials available in variety of colors, you can create your own custom design that will fit the personality of every start athlete in your practice. On behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Laboratories, thanks for watching. Have a happy 4th of July. Thank you for that, Dr. Murashan. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Laboratories, thank you for watching, and I'll meet you right back here next time.